Hello friends, Pastor Dave here for our daily devotional, Something Deeper. It is Saturday, so that means the Lord's Day. It's tomorrow. We're going to worship at 10 o'clock at First Brethren Church of Sarasota, and you are personally invited to come and join us. And if you can't join us physically, you can still come online. Tonight for the devotional, I wanted to go back to Numbers 22 and tell the story of Balaam and his donkey. Let's talk about that on Something Deeper. Donkeys have a reputation for being stubborn, but in this story, the donkey was kind of an overachiever in that category, but for a good reason. In Numbers 22, we hear the story of Balaam. Balaam was hired by Balak, the king that was opposing Israel, to curse Israel. Now, it seems that Balaam really was a prophet of God. He talks about the Lord and how he could only do what the Lord said. So when Balak asked him to curse Israel, he said, I can't do it. God told me not to do it. And so then Balak upped the ante. He said, whatever you ask for, whatever you want, I will pay it. Just curse Israel. And that night God told him he could go with Balak, but he said, only do what I tell you to do. But for some reason, it's not really laid out in the story. God was angry at Balaam for going. My only guess is that Balaam probably decided to go and just say whatever Balak wanted him to say. And so God opposed him. God stood in his way. And he sent an angel to stand in the path. And Balaam was just riding his donkey. And all of a sudden his donkey just took off and went off into a field and left the road. And so Balaam started beating his donkey. And he got back on the road, and they're going down the road again. And again, the donkey veered to the side. This time he crushed Balaam's foot against the wall. And Balaam was really angry and started beating him again. And then let's pick it up at at Numbers 22, 26. Then the angel of the Lord moved on ahead and stood in a narrow place where there was no room to turn, either to the right or to the left. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, it lay down under Balaam, and he was angry, and beat it with his staff. Then the Lord opened the donkey's mouth, and it said to Balaam, What have I done to you to make you beat me these three times? (laughs) What a strange event. But Balaam, I guess he was used to spiritual things. He answered the donkey. He said, you have made a fool of me. If only I had a sword in my hand, I would kill you right now. Seems like Balaam must have had a trouble with um, maybe a temper. Can you think about how valuable a talking donkey is? (laughs) But he's so angry, he's going to kill him anyway. The donkey said to Balaam, am I not your own donkey, which you have always ridden to this day? Have I been in the habit of doing this to you? No, he said. Then the Lord opened Balaam's eyes, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with his sword drawn. So he bowed low and fell face down. The angel of the Lord asked him, Why have you beaten your donkey these three times? I have come here to oppose you, because your path is a reckless one before me. The donkey saw me and turned away from me these three times. If it had not turned away... I would certainly have killed you by now, but I would have spared it. Balaam said to the angel of the Lord, I have sinned. I did not realize you were standing in the road to oppose me. Now if you are displeased, I will go back. The angel of the Lord said to Balaam, Go with the men, but speak only what I tell you. So Balaam went with Balak's officials. It doesn't seem like Balaam is confused about why he's being opposed, why God is angry with him. So Balaam must have decided, well, I'll just go and say whatever Balak wants me to say. You know, that's a temptation for pastors as well, to say what people want to hear. The Bible says in the last days, people will gather around them teachers that will tell them what their itching ears want to hear. They don't want to hear the truth. And certainly today, people don't want to hear the truth. 
Uh, if the truth goes against the narrative, then they don't want to hear it. The, the, I just read an article. There was a professor in Harvard that did a study on the incidents of police officers shooting black suspects. And although he found that black suspects were more likely to get beaten and more likely to get arrested, he found out that they were less likely to be shot. And he published the findings. His colleagues told him not to, but he did anyway. By the way, this professor is African American, but he was so vilified after he posted this that he had to have an armed guard for a month go with him to the grocery store and everywhere else. People didn't want to hear the truth. The truth is, was right there in the statistics, but people told him, don't tell people. Don't tell them what you found. He actually found the opposite of what he expected, but he was honest, and so he told what he found. Still today, people don't want to hear the truth, and yet we are called to convey the truth, to tell what we have witnessed about Jesus. And so we need to make sure that we are committed to saying what is true, whether it's popular or not. I think there's another story here, though, and that is Balaam, all he could do was get angry at this donkey for crushing his foot and for getting off the path and now for finally lying down and not moving. He didn't know that these inconveniences were actually saving his life. Do you think that happens to us sometimes and we don't even know it? You think maybe you had a flat tire because God knew that there was a wreck down the road that you would be in? Maybe God's protecting you. Sometimes when bad things happen, maybe it's because God's making sure that worse things don't happen to us. Let's be humble and realize that we never have the whole story. And if God allows us to go through challenging things, he must have a reason for doing it. Balaam went on and, and he finally did what God told him to do. He stood up there to curse the people of Israel and all that came out of his mouth were blessings. In the end, he did that right thing. Now, he did tell, the, tell Balak, Balak that the only thing that could do, he could do that would thwart Israel is if he could entice them to turn away from God. And so that's kind of the campaign that Balak tried and, and was successful in some, to some extent in that. But Balaam only said the words that God wanted him to. So he learned his lesson. <laughs> Let's learn the lesson as well. Things work out when we do things God's way. They work out in the end. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for this reminder of your watchful care, this reminder of the justice that you have, that you will not stand by idly while we sin. Thank you, Father, that you don't let us get away with sin and keep on sinning until we're lost. I, I thank you, Father, that you call us back to yourself. I thank you for those times when we respond and, and we feel guilty and we have to do the right thing then. I thank you, Lord, for times that we deal with consequences that turn us back to the right path. And I thank you, Lord, for times that are hard times, even when we don't know the reason. But it, you have a reason. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, God bless you all. Have a good night.